Welcome to Forum 360, a program here in Northeast Ohio where we look at a global outlook topic and take a local view. And what we have today is an interesting program right here on Western Reserve Public Television, PBS channels 45, 49, Hudson Community Television, and Rubber City Radio stations where we're heard here in Northeast Ohio. I'm Bill Steven Saus, your host of Forum 360. Our guest today is Rob Gaydosh, a law enforcement officer and an instructor in firearms with the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy. And today we'd like to focus in on the carrying concealed weapons law and as a trainer uh, of citizens here in Ohio that are seeking to carry a concealed weapon for self-defense purposes, uh, we're going to ask uh, Officer Gaydosh, Rob Gaydosh, uh, some new ideas and uh, try to get uh, an understanding of how the CCW uh, laws and are practiced and how, the, how training is done. Rob, good to have you here on Forum 360. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Uh, first of all, Rob, what was your training to uh, become a firearms instructor? You're a law enforcement officer. Right. I became, uh, I've always been a, a gun person. Uh, I became a police officer back in 97. I've been a cop about 21 years. Uh, got into firearms training right away uh, with some of the events that were happening with the police department, police agencies. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there I branched out from rifles to pistols. After I started doing that, I started teaching. I taught some with Opata, as you stated. I taught some with some private companies. And I've done all the requalifications for our department currently. And from there I moved forward and started to teach the CCW class when the state opened up the availability for a citizen to carry a gun legally. And you uh, you are proprietor of Dosh Tactical uh, LLC, an area program and a company that provides training. What's the process, Rob, to get a CCW here in Ohio now? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to take some version of a training class. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, I decided that I wanted to open my own company and get people training from more from a law enforcement perspective and get the correct information out there. There's a lot of instructors out there. I just want people to have the right information. So your first step is you take a training class and you get certified via what the state requires. It's a eight hour class, six hours of the classroom followed by at least two hours of range time. Now, you have to work with also the local sheriff's departments because don't the applications have to go through the sheriff's departments? Too? Once a civilian or person finishes the class, then they have the ability to go to the Sheriff's Department and apply for their license. The Sheriff's Department handles all the background checks and the issuing of the licenses. I do the training, they fill out the proper paperwork which we go over in the class, set a time, go to the Sheriff, set an appointment date, and then the Sheriff does the background and issues the actual license. And usually if uh, people go to the Sheriff's Department, the Ohio Attorney General's, the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy provides brochures and information uh, so that you can read up on this and you can also go to the Ohio Attorney General's website, ohioattorneygeneral.gov, and uh, click on CCW training. Uh, That's correct. Rob, let's say uh, you, you sign up for a class with you. Uh, what should you expect to do the first, uh, as soon as you sign up? What, what do you tell students to do? What, what do you tell students to expect? I think more importantly, you have to check in your instructor and make sure it's a qualified instructor. Again, there's a lot of instructors out there and some, some are better than others. And you need to make sure your instructor knows the law and can teach you the laws of the state. Um, obviously, your instructor should be teaching the safety of firearms. The last thing you want to do is have an incident where you have a problem with your gun or a negligent discharge or, mm -hmm. or you don't want to get in a position where you make a mistake and could get arrested. Um, so it's very important to check in your instructor. Um, the instructor should give you all the information about the laws, all the information about where you can and can't carry. They should give you some scenarios of you know, what could happen if, if a situation arose and what you should do when law enforcement responds to the scene if you unfortunately had to use your firearm. To now, as far as the uh, curriculum, what do you teach in the class in the first six hours or the, during the, uh, the basically the sit down uh, part of it? During my class, I talk about several different firearms. I don't like to get people drawn into one gun or another gun. I talk about the laws. I go over the entire book with the class so you can say that you went through the book and I explain sections that are a little confusing maybe if you just read it. Um, I try and give a perspective from a law enforcement. Hey, this is what we're looking for. This is what you have to say to us so you don't make any mistakes. And so everyone's comfortable in the situation. For example, at a traffic stop, if you're carrying a firearm, you have to announce that you have a CCW permit and you are carrying a firearm where it is. 
and if there's any officer directions that need to be followed. If you don't say that, you're breaking the law. So I make sure with my students that they know that and then we carry on through the class with all those type things. So a student has to learn those things and properly adhere to those gun safety issues as well as, as you said, if an officer approaches uh, in a traffic stop or you're in a, an accident, you have to identify. Usually the state will provide the officer with knowledge through uh, through their dispatcher that there might be a, a CCW involved in this? Correct. There, your registration, your plates, your name, date of birth, if we run it, it comes up that you have a CCW permit. But if you're not carrying a gun, technically you don't have to say anything. But I always tell my students it's easier just to let us know, hey, I'm a permit holder. I just don't have my gun at this time. Um, but you definitely have to say if you're a carrying gun that you are and where it is. And this way, you know, if we're questioning you or talking to you, we may or may not take the firearm. We can take it from you. Very few officers do. We're confident that you're a past a background check RA, that you're a safe, responsible gun owner, and that you've gone through proper training. So we just need to know because the law says you have to tell us. And Rob, what are some of the things that a licensee has to consider uh, to maintain that? Is there a, 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 uh, any type of continuing education, or is it just up to the student or the CCW holder to uh, contact an instructor like yourself and say, I'd like to get some more training? That's always a good idea, correct? Correct. What I always say is the, the actual class to get your CCW permit, that's, that's like step one. That's the ground Basic level. That's, that's just like getting your temporary driver's license in Ohio. You learn how to drive. Okay. From that point, you have to move forward and you have to actually get training. If you're going to carry a gun for a defensive purpose, you need to get trained to be able to carry that gun, conceal that gun, draw and fire that gun safely. You need to understand what it's like, what bullets do when they penetrate a target, when they over penetrate a target. You need to understand all those concepts so if you do carry and you do have to use your weapon that you're doing it in a safe manner so you stop the threat that's trying to hurt you but you don't do any damage to anything collateral. And we've heard uh, cases in the news where uh, people that were trained properly, CCW holders, uh, they do get involved in an incident. They do maybe save a life or save a friend's life uh, and uh, yet the law enforcement uh, agency for that community would have to investigate that, correct, if there was some type Absolutely. of Absolutely. It's still a crime until we investigate it and prove that it was self-defense. So there's a crime it, scene and then... Correct. Uh, it's processed just like a normal crime scene. Um, it's investigated just like a normal crime scene because technically until we prove that it was a legitimate self-defense, which usually doesn't take very long, um, but you're still going to lose your firearm for the purpose of the investigation because it's evidence of a crime until we prove otherwise. Right. You could be detained. You're definitely going to have to give a statement. You're definitely going to be questioned about it. You're probably going to want to retain some type of legal counsel just to protect yourself. You used your weapon to protect yourself physically. You used your constitutional rights to protect yourself. And again, you can go to OhioAttorneyGeneral.gov and uh, click on the CCW uh, site and uh, link and find out more about it. But uh, let's say the type of people you train, the age group, uh, different ages, uh, youngest versus oldest. Uh, I've, I've trained just about everybody. My youngest student obviously is uh, under 20, being that they can get a permit when they're 21, 21 legally, but they were still under 20. They got their class out of the way, so when they turn 21, they could go right away to get their permit. Um, I've trained a young lady up to the age of 89 years old. Wanted to exercise her constitutional rights, wanted to exercise her Ohio rights, and got her CCW permit. She did a very good job. Now, if someone travels to another state outside of Ohio, I know there's some reciprocity, but uh, what as an instructor do you tell your students about, uh, you know, once you travel, you, you know, carrying a weapon, what are some of the things you suggest they do? The most important thing someone can do if they're planning on leaving the state of Ohio is to check that state's website, see if they have a carry conceal law, see if the Ohio permit is valid there. Once they verify the permit's valid there, they need to review that state's laws because when you're in that state, you're governed by that state's laws. There's a lot of states that accept Ohio's permit, but I always caution people to make sure that they're legitimate and legal to carry a gun before they carry a gun in that state. This permit is strictly for Ohio, and that's what I teach is Ohio law. And we talked about your teaching, the, uh, the legal side of it, and the precautionary uh, measures that need to be taken. What about the actual firearm range uh, work that you have to do with them, the couple hours uh, involved in that? What, what goes on? What do you have to do? Part of my class is, is hands-on firearm. You have to 
touch a firearm, you have to handle a firearm, you have to load and unload a firearm with inert ammunition to show that you're comfortable in doing it. When we move out to the range and we actually go to live fire where we're loading live ammunition into the weapon system, charging, cycling, unloading, clearing, maintaining our rules of safety all the time, we go through many different weapon systems I don't like people to get kind of sucked into one gun or another, you have to have this gun, you have to have this brand, because my thing is you have to have a gun that fits your hand. Right. Once we get a gun that fits our hand, we have to get a caliber, which is a size bullet that comes out of the gun that we can control. There's larger calibers and smaller calibers. They all can do the right amount of threat stopping and neutralization as long as shot placement's correct. But if we can control that caliber with the right fitting pistol or revolver, then we can shoot properly and hit what we want to hit and we practice and train with that gear. Once we get that established that this is our gear, we're gonna practice and train with that so we're very proficient and very smooth with that gear. Is there any information that you would give a student as to uh, how would they find a firearm? Uh, because as you said, different people prefer different sizes, different uh, calibers, different companies. Some prefer American-made companies, some prefer overseas companies depending upon uh, you know what they understand so uh, tell them about the pros and cons of the different styles and weapons uh, where do you go a, to a lot of people ask before the class should I buy a gun before I come to class and I says no you don't have to I, I have several guns that I bring to class in various sizes and calibers and this way you can touch and feel and get that right gun to fit your hand shoot it if you don't like that one we can put it down and pick up another style gun maybe another action style another um, trigger press depending on what we go maybe a revolver is better for you after we try a couple different guns or after you try one that fits your hand you say yes this is the one I like now you can be an educated consumer you, you know you've shot that gun it fits your hand right now you can go out and shop for one either new or used and find the right gun for you versus going out and buying a gun for four or five six hundred dollars and then it doesn't work doesn't fit doesn't suit your purpose that you're gonna use the gun for whether you're going to conceal it or keep it in your car or keep it for home defense and then you have to go out and spend more money again and buy another gun I'm okay with people buying a couple guns but it's always good to have the right gun for you and you always say you know don't listen to your neighbor Jim or Betty or Bob or Sue that are telling you something other than the instructor uh, how to handle uh, things in, in the CCW. When in doubt, I always say check it out for yourself. They're not the one that gets in trouble. They're not the one that you know spends the money on that gun. They're not the one that takes that gun somewhere you shouldn't be. That would be you. And if you listen to someone else besides the laws of the state of Ohio or besides that instructor, you could be putting yourself in jeopardy, and that's you don't want to be in that position. Now there are certain things that you have to do when you're, uh, let's say, you're traveling. Is uh, you know sometimes safe to keep the, uh, when you're traveling in an area, it's good sometimes to keep certain ammo away from the weapon if you're, if it's not on you, if it's not being concealed immediately. Let's say you're just traveling, uh, mm -hmm. you're going to uh, visit relatives and, and you don't have your weapon at hand, it's in the rear of the vehicle or somewhere, you should separate the, the ammo, that's a standard procedure sometimes? If you don't have a CCW permit in the state of Ohio, you cannot legally carry a loaded firearm. In the, if, in the vehicle? In the vehicle or on your, on your person. If you do have a CCW permit, you can carry a concealed weapon loaded in your car. So for instance, when people come to my class, they're coming to the range to learn. They're coming to the class to learn. So their ammunition and the weapon have to be separate. The state of Ohio says a reasonable and prudent man would have to exit the vehicle to get to the, to put the two together. So I always recommend to keep the weapon system unloaded in the, in the factory box it came in or in, in a bag or a range bag up front and then the ammo locked in your trunk separate so you don't have any problems. Now once you get your permit, you can keep it together and, and be concealed and, and carrying it but we also have to keep in the factor, are our children present? Can they get access to it? Because the last thing we want to do is let an unauthorized person or a child get access to your firearm. So if you're not in control of that firearm, I highly recommend unloading it, clearing it, putting even a gun lock in place so it cannot be used by someone that's not authorized to use it. You're listening to uh, Forum 360 and viewing Forum 360 on Western Reserve Public Television. Your PBS stations 4549, Hudson Community Cable TV, and the Rubber City Radio stations. I'm Bill Steven Saus, and thank you for being with us on Forum 360 as we explore carrying concealed weapon in Ohio. Our, our guest is Officer Rob Gaydosh, a 21-year veteran uh, police officer, uh, firearms trainer with the state of Ohio, the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy. And uh, he graduated from the University of Akron uh, in criminal justice and uh, police academy 
uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, having a uh, CCW, Rob, uh, carrying a gun is for your protection. Uh, we often talk about the seriousness of this. Uh, we'll, th we'll talk a little bit about self-defense and the concept of uh, protecting yourself with this CCW. What I tell people is a gun is no more of an extension of your hand. A knife is no more of an extension of your hand. I try and teach people, it's ironic that it's Form 360, I try and teach people their 360 awareness, to teach people to open up their view, right. to just walk into an area and go, why is that person standing there when no one else is around? Why is that person leaning against my car when there's no other cars in the parking lot? Do I really need to go to that car? Do I, can I go out and exit and maybe get a security guard or a police officer to find out? But if you're down on your phone, texting away, or you're not paying attention, and all of a sudden you walk into that threat, you could be armed with every gun in the world. If the threat is on top of you before you see it and perceive it, you're not gonna be able to get your weapon and defend yourself. Something as simple as stepping away from someone, putting a car between you, putting a table between you and the person, addressing them. I say hello to people all the time. If I talk to someone, they know that I've made eye contact, that I've addressed them, that I know they're there. And all of a sudden, if their intention was to hurt me or do something bad or commit a crime against me, the loop has changed. They have to go, is this really a soft target? Is this a soft threat? And chances are they're going to pick something else or walk away quickly. Criminals don't like to be identified. They, they like to surprise you, attack you, get what they want, and leave before they can be identified and prosecuted. Having a weapon is a nice addition to being able to protect yourself. But seeing the threat and addressing the threat before it even becomes a threat, you may never even have to produce your weapon, which is a nice option too, because then you don't have to worry about the fact that you had to use a weapon in a situation to defend yourself when you simply saw it coming and avoided it. Now, you're a law enforcement officer, so you're teaching uh, civilians for uh, carrying a concealed weapon under the Ohio laws. So understanding that CCW, in your opinion, right, it doesn't mean you're gonna be a crime fighter as a civilian. It says that right in the, in the law and in the book. The purpose for you getting your CCW is for self-defense, defense of others, defense of your family, defense of your property to an extent. That's what the this is for. This doesn't make you a police officer. This doesn't make you a private investigator. It doesn't even make you a security guard. We always tell people, if you have a weapon and you see a crime or see a suspicious person, your job is to call us. Let us go. Let us talk to the person. We're trained. We have body armor on. We can deal with people, criminal record check people over a radio. Talk to people in a way maybe that you don't understand how we talk to them or how we act around people, and then we can determine if they're a threat versus you walking up and going after that threat. One of the rules, say, is to retreat. If you can get away from a situation by simply leaving, that's the best thing you can do. Grab your kids and run. There's nothing wrong with that. Run, hide, fight. Sometimes you gotta run, sometimes you gotta hide, sometimes you gotta fight, but you gotta be ready to do all three at the same time. While running, you gotta look for a place to hide. While hiding, you gotta be ready to fight but you gotta be ready to run again. There's nothing wrong with running. And it's good to have, a, if you have a cell phone or a phone, to call 911. Absolutely. Let the local law enforcement know what's happening in, in the fact that you're having to defend yourself. And when you do call 911, just saying there's a man that's suspicious doesn't help us. Is it a white male, is it a black male? Does he have a red shirt on? Does he have a blue shirt on? Is he buy a black pickup truck? Is he buy a red sports car? Those are the things that can help us. If it's in a car, does the car have a busted taillight? Does it have a busted headlight? Something that would identify it quickly for us. Those are the things that help us when we get there. So when we show up, we don't see you and go, maybe that's the suspect, maybe that's the bad guy. It helps us because you've told us the good information, good description. That's the stuff that can help us. Now, in your capacity as uh, director of, and uh, president of DOSH Tactical LLC, uh, you, you give training, you provide training, uh, you help your students. Uh, what are some of the, when the students graduate and they leave, do they come back with some questions and answers? Or, Rob, I never realized this would come up. Anything that you can remember uh, talking to some of your students? The old class used to be 12 hours. That was a long day. The new class is eight hours. It's still a long day because you're covering a lot of material and some instructors break it up over a couple of days. I like to stay focused on the day and get through a day. Right. When, when people sit back, relax, and start to rethink what they just went through, they read the book again or they go through something, they come up with questions and they'll ask the questions. Call back, hey, can I carry a gun if I see this sign? No, how we, how we said is once you, know, you saw this sign, 
that that's a restricted area you can't carry a gun okay hey if I got to go get a police report at the police station can I take my gun in there no that's listed in the book that that's a restricted area so we review a lot of the things that just you know you went through at the end of my class I give you a written test the written test is a review of everything we covered that day and a lot of that stuff is all based on the firearm safety being safe with that firearm, safe for you, safe so you can protect yourself, protect your family, but safe so you don't get yourself in trouble. If you're speeding down the road and get a ticket, it's a two points violation for a speeding ticket. If you're speeding down the road, get pulled over for speed and do something wrong, reference your weapon, you could be arrested for anything and to up to in a felony. We don't wanna have that happen to a good person that's carrying a gun. We wanna make sure you understand the law. So all those questions, as we go back through them, people, they get a little more clarification. The second thing people contact me about is they're at the gun shop. Hey, I'm looking at this gun and this gun. Here's the price difference. Which is a better gun? I'm not gonna tell you which is a better gun. There's a lot of great guns out there. I personally like certain style guns. Other people like other style guns. But I can pick up any gun and shoot it once I learn that gun. So what I tell people is do you trust your life in a, in a, in a cheap car or do you trust your life in the good car? Do you put your kids on a good school bus or do you let your kids walk down a, a busy highway to get to school? Buy once, cry once. You know They'll talk right. to me about good quality. The key is quality. If something's a quality product that's got a good reputation and is dependable, that would be a good firearm for you to carry. And since 2004, when the Ohio CCW law uh, was put into effect, law enforcement seems to be working well with the uh, with the citizens. There seems to be in your, at least in your area here in Northeast Ohio, you've had some good success. The thing that I understand as a police officer is that everybody that gets a CCW permit, although some can fall through the cracks, like in any type like capacity, those people have been background checked, those people can legally own a firearm, those people have been trained to some degree, at least the initial training. Those people don't bother me, they don't scare me, they're generally good people that are there to help me. And I appreciate that. As long as they tell me what they're supposed to at the car, and if they don't because they're nervous, it's very nervous to be approached by a police officer sometimes. I understand that because I've been approached by a police officer sometimes. So when they say it wrong or do something wrong, I say, hey, listen, make sure you tell me this. Make sure you say this. Make sure you keep your hands here. And I just re-educate them a little bit, a little free training on the side of the road. But the majority of people that I've run into have been very, very correct, very polite. We've had no problems with that. And I know they're good people. If there is a question, if there is a concern, like I said, can I take a firearm away during a traffic stop during an encounter? Sure I can. You can't have alcohol in your system. You can't have drugs in your system when you be in possession of a firearm. Those are concerns when people go out and they have a couple beers after work or they go out to a party and they have their gun. We talk about how you shouldn't have a gun when you're drinking. It's against the law. But we also talk about the reality of life where you might go out and have a drink. So what do you do before you have that drink? Unload your gun, secure it make sure it's legal. So if you do go have a beer after work and then you drive home and if you would get pulled over or get in an accident or something and not be impaired as far as driving, so you don't get arrested for a CCW violation. You were talking about the types of guns a little bit ago. Uh, let's say you prefer a semi-automatic where you have a magazine you load it and you can shoot many more rounds than uh, a revolver usually. Um, would you suggest that they take uh, second class with the revolver or uh, one class is enough uh, using one trying to get used to both is it do you require them to let's go back and take a refresher with this revolver because you just bought it I, I highly recommend additional training if you if you get your CCW permit and you purchase a weapon you plan to carry it whether it's a revolver or a semi-automatic pistol you absolutely have to have continuing training with that you have to understand every aspect of how that weapon works how to load it safely, how to unload it safely, how much pressure you have to put on the trigger to make it go bang. You have to understand the sights. You have to understand everything about that weapon. So if you do switch over to a different gun or a new gun, absolutely get training with that, whether it's from me or another qualified instructor. There's a lot of good instructors out there, but check them out. Make sure they're good instructors. Get references. Talk to people that have been with them and trust them. For our Forum 360 uh, viewers and our listeners on River City Radio, we're getting a lot of uh, uh, people that call in with questions and do you have a phone number that they might be able to call you and say I'd like to request some information or maybe uh, find out how to take a class. Sure. My uh, number is area code 216-409-1808. It's 216-409-1808. That is my cell phone number. It'll answer. This is Rob at Dosh Tactical. 
and usually if it goes to voicemail, I'm sleeping because I'm on shift work a lot. And As I will call you back. Leave me your name and your telephone number that you're interested in CCW training. I will call you back. What I do generally is I keep everyone's names. When I get a date for a class, I will give a phone call. If you have an email address, I'll email you out a form with all my information about where the class is going to be and everything about me. You can tell me that's going to work for you on that date and time, and I check you off, and we have the class that day, and you show up. Thank you. Uh, Firearms trainer uh, Rob Gaydosh is with us, and he's been uh, involved in both uh, civilian and police training. Um, during the week, uh, how much time do you dedicate to the CCW mm -hmm. training, or is, uh, do you do classes every week or uh, periodically? I try and do a class once a month. I, a month. I try and have a smaller group. Uh, I don't like to have big 20, 30, 40 people rooms. I like to have about 10 people. Uh, that's a good size class for me. I would like to bring in a second instructor a lot of times because when you're training with, with my company and you're training with me, I want to make sure somebody's right there to help you. Somebody's right there to put hands on. Somebody's right there to correct something that possibly is going to be unsafe if it continues. I don't want to have any accidents. I want to have good solid training. I want to make sure your grip's good, your sights are good, the way you're working the trigger is good. So you proficiently hit the target and then we build those skills and we keep building into being smooth with that weapon system. Thank you Rob Gaydosh for being on Forum 360. I know you brought up some awareness to the CCW situation here in Ohio. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Anything I can do to help. Forum 360 is brought to you with support from Electric Impulse Communications, Kim and Harvey Nelson, Rubber City Radio Group, Acronist.com, Hudson Cable, Medical Mutual of Ohio, Forum 360 supporters, and the Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron.